take an individual or share it. And we're going to dissect it. And what you'll see when you go in, or what do you see? What strikes you as you cut open? Chambers. Chambers. Like different segments. Different colors, different segments. Very good. Regions or areas. Um, you can see a very light colored area. You see that? That outer light colored area. That's the cortex, renal cortex. By the way, you have a list. So we're going by your list. Um, there's a couple of things that I add to the list. One of them is helium. Is what helium? Or maybe it's not there already. I don't remember. Helium. Helium is plural. Helium is singular. And that would be that little depression. That depression right there where, where blood vessels and nerves and so on enter or leave a structure. We've seen the term helios before, I hope, in respiratory. The lung is the same way. And the, um, the lymph nodes are the same thing. They have this depression. Um, so the kidney has the helios. And in there you have um, the renal artery, the renal vein, and the urethra um, uh, that enters and leaves it. All right, so back to our diagram here. When you cut it up, when you see the cortex, and then you see a dark colored area, that's the medullary region. I'm giving you the regions now. Within the regions, you have structures. So you have the cortical region, you have the medullary region, and then you have this clear, a whitey area there, that's the pelvis, the renal pelvis. Pelvis, medulla, cortex. Okay. Now, within each of the regions, you have different structures. So, the most obvious one is in the medullary region, you have these triangle-shaped structures called pyramids. So, those are the renal pyramids. That would be these right here. This is a three-dimensional version. This is cut. This is dissected. So, those are two-dimensional versions. Here's the cortex around. Ooh, that's the cortex around here. See all those blood vessels there? Mm -hmm. That's important because the glomerulus is here. These blood vessels are delivering to the glomerulus. Here's an example. Oh, maybe I could use this. I could use this. Mm -hmm. What they're showing you here is the cortex. And up here in the cortex, this is down in the medullary region down here. So up here is where the business ends. You can see the nephron, the bulk of the nephron is up here. They're called, so most of them are called cortical nephron. There's a little piece of the nephron that di that drop that di um, descends into the medulla. That's the loop of Henley. And the loop of Henley, this one is the long one. And then there's a collecting duct. So basically what you're seeing here is that the nephron is mostly, the glomerulus area is mostly up here. And then these little parts stick down into the, um, the pyramid. And in fact, they are responsible for the striations that the pyramid has. So if you can imagine in your mind's eye, these striations are due to a ton of these things, because there's millions of them. They're microscopic. Here is a, this one is trying to show you. Again, you see, you see the glomerulus up here, and then there they're showing you part of it sticking down. See the striation? Those are all due to the loop of Henley and the collecting duct that juts down into the uh, pyramid. So my point again is that these regions have special things. The cortex has the nephrons, the medulla has the pyramids, and the, the pelvis. Pelvis has these creamy stuff here. Um, so it, these are little cups that the pyramid sits in. There's a cup, there's a cup, there's a cup, there's a cup, there's a cup dissected. Those are called calyces or calyx. Calyx is in singular, calyx is in plural. In your book, you'll see minor calyx and major calyx. For my purposes, if I stick a pin in there, you can just say calyx, but here is the difference. The major calyx give rise to the minor one. So this, this section here, like a stem, give rise to this one and this one. These are the minor. The minor ones are
are in touch. They're literally in touch with the pyramid. So this is a minor. This is a minor. That's a minor. This is a major. So kind of like the sternum. Right? Major calyx gives rise to the minor calyx. So this is a um, this is a major calyx here. There's a pyramid coming up from this way. Um, and here it is again. This one, you can see the cup. This time they, they, they take the pyramid out. That's a this is a minor calyx. The, the pyramid would sit right on it. If you look down in it, you see little holes. Mm -hmm. So what will happen is the, um, the collecting duct will drain. The urine will drain down to those little holes. And then they, it will all be directed into this funnel area and then down into the arm, the ureter. So here's a, there's a minor calyx, there's a minor one, there's another one. Um, this is a major one. Here's a minor one, there's, another, there's three little minor ones there. Speaking of, if you cut up on the pyramid, you will see that at the tip it comes to a nipple, to a pointy area. I don't know what number this is, 19 probably. Um, that's called the renal papillae. The term papillae means nipple. So it's that little pointy area. That's the renal papillae. This is the pyramid, so it's the tip of the pyramid. And you can see it, you can even see it on this one. Well, you can see it on the, you see it kind of take on a, a lightish color. They try to show it here as well. You see the light colored area. That's the, um, the um, papillae region. Other things you can see on this model, this brownish outer thin brownish covering, that's the renal capsule. And I put this on the board so because there's another term that students mix up, and that's renal corpuscle. A corpuscle is different from a capsule. A corpuscle is these white things here. It's a Bowman's capsule with the glomerulus inside. The corpuscle is a combined, see they dissect it for us so we can see the two structures that is inside. I'll get back to that in a minute. But the capsule is a membrane. Like here it is. So that's the first item on the lips. On the lips. That's the, yeah. Just making sure that that's not the. Because I don't see capsule. See this? See this membrane here? It was all over. You can we get them all over it. I don't know. This batch doesn't seem to have much. So I just like did a little star. That's the renal capsule. Now, notice we don't say visceral peritoneum. Usually, when an, uh, a structure has a membrane over it, it's visceral something. Mm -hmm. Well, the kidney is not considered to be in the peritoneal cavity. It is considered to be retroperitoneal. So because it's behind the peritoneum, they don't use the term visceral peritoneum. They use renal capsule. But it's the same covering that you would find on any of the others. There's another thing about the kidney, and that is you can see a bunch of fat. Can you see that? Um, it is packed, so they, <coughs> there's another covering of very thick adipose tissue. And when you look in the cat, I don't know if you remember when you were doing blood vessels, <coughs> it was practically buried in fat. That's not on the bladder too. You notice the bladder had fat around it. That's not unusual because the viscera, especially when they're not protected and the kidney is kind of exposed, um, so it's covered in fat to give it a layer of protection. Just like one of the reasons you have the great aumentum up to the front, because you don't have any bony covering. So if you get a hit to the front, it should take off a lot of that force. Same thing, if you get a hit to the back, the um, fat should absorb a lot of that force. Um, that's probably one of the reasons. You notice how the spleen get damaged easily, but the kidney doesn't e e um, experience the same um, amount of damage because the kidney is packed in fat, the spleen is. All right, so that's, so what we put
covered so far is the renal capsule, which is the covering. The renal, the, the ileus, which is the depression. Um, the region. One of the things that you see here, and most of them don't have any. Generally, if we get good ones, we can tell the different um, blood vessels and the ureter. We can see these. For example, this one is not too bad. This is the ureter. And then if I look carefully, I'll see this vessel here. And, and I know it's an artery because it's open. Can you see the hole? Mm -hmm. And that's what arteries are. They're patent. They're nice and thick and patent. They're firm. And then the vein is there. But the vein is collapsed, and it's usually much larger than the artery. I'm not seeing the vein on this one. Probably got cut off. I don't see a vein on that one. It's the look of him, like well, H -E -M. But the, what I'm trying to say is that that usually is not just messy stuff. It's actually the blood vessels and the ureter um, that's coming out of the deal. All right, what else? Renal columns. The renal columns um, are the pieces of, um, it's actually cortical material. Did you notice? It's the same creamy color like that. So it's the cortex that dips down. Reminds me of trabeculae. Remember tr trabeculae that separates like this? Oh, yeah, I'm done with thymus and so on. We'll do that in micro. But um, here's this piece of our cortex that's pushing itself down between the pyramids and separating them. And that's called the renal column. But although it's cortical material, it's considered part of the medulla because it's in this region here. So the column is in the medullary region, even though it's actually cortical material. Now, I think that takes care of the structures. Do we have a, am I missing anything on that list? Okay, so now let's go a little deeper. And I have some keys. Take one part done. Is that enough? Your genital sinus? That's on the cap. No, I'm not talking about oh, it. Okay. Um, Let's see. Let's talk about this one before we go deep into the anatomy. So let's start with the male. One of the reasons we use this is because of the um, interesting intersection between the, re the male uh, reproductive um, and the male urinary. In fact, they share some structures. And they come together real um, closely, very intimately. For example, this is the bladder of the male. And coming out of the bladder, there's a urethra. And you notice it's a very long urethra. It's, it uh, extends from the bladder all the way through the, the um, this is the um, prostate. Anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. Through this prostate, so the, 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 the prostate is bisecting it or dissecting it. Um, and so when it's passing through, if the prostate is swollen, it just kind of clamp down on it. And this is why people with prostate issues, one of the first signs is probably the urination. So the urethral passes and it extends through the penis and it comes out here that's a urethral orifice. In fact, the urethra is so long that again, in the textbook, you'll see they talk about prosthetic urethra. 